Today we're going to discuss self-forgiveness. In last week's episode, we talked about how to forgive. And we thought a good follow-up would be self-forgiveness. I think that's a big hurdle that many people have. I know that I did. One of the reasons I had such a challenge with it was that when people would first talk to me about forgiveness, when I started on my journey of improvement, I automatically associated it to the idea that I had been given growing up from religious input. You know, that was forgiveness was something that you had to ask for, earn, and then be granted by someone or something outside of yourself. The concept of self-forgiveness, especially because of it being religious definition, was that if I messed up and there was something I was carrying guilt or shame for, God was going to have to forgive me for that. You know, I still needed to earn that external acknowledgement that it was okay. Early in sobriety, I was asked to make a list of people who I had harmed and then become willing to make amends to them, reparations to them for what I had done. And to me, part of that process was about asking them for forgiveness. With my old definition, that was a very scary process for me because Sometimes you would approach these people and apologize for what you'd done, and they would grant you that forgiveness. And other times they wouldn't. They would be angry. And I don't know whether somebody else taught me this or whether it was just something I learned, but what I found was by learning to change my definition of forgiveness and forgive myself first, it made approaching them a lot easier. So first, changing the definition of forgiveness came down to recognizing that forgiveness is a perception of an event that happened. If I'm carrying guilt or shame for something, I have one perception of what happened, and that's the thing that I'm associating all this negative energy, this negative association to. Sometimes, whatever happened was just the result of a, actually most times, what happened was just the result of a bad choice, a bad decision. You know, for me, sometimes those bad choices and bad decisions were fueled by the fact that I was wasted. And other times, they were just bad decisions. When I acknowledge that I made a bad choice, I then can accept responsibility for it. I can be accountable for it. I can say, okay, you know what? In this instance, I hurt somebody, I wronged somebody, and I need to go to them and say, you know what, when I did X, I was wrong, and I'm sorry. And I need to let go, because at that point, whether they accept that from me and forgive me or not, I don't have any control over. I've done what I can do. I've acknowledged that it was a bad decision, and I've accepted responsibility and become accountable for it. And then after I let go of it, I'm able to move forward. Again, letting go of it means I'm not carrying the guilt and the shame anymore. It also means letting go of what their response is to it. Because sometimes they're going to embrace it, sometimes they're not. An example I have is that in the high point of my drinking, three of the people that I used to hang out with the most um, did something to me that I felt humiliated over or at least I perceived that they did it to me. And actually it was me just being stupid. But I was so angry with them that I needed to get back. So I went to their house one night, they were all living together, and I slashed the tires on all three of their cars. And then I took off, I left the state actually. About six years into my sobriety, I finally got up the courage to tell them to make amends. And I had three very different experiences. The very first person that I went to, I told him what I had done and he kind of laughed it off. He told me he already knew it. He had kind of figured that part out. And he accepted the money that I gave him to pay for the tires. 
Second guy that I went to was actually much more compassionate, much more forgiving. And I kind of thought he would be the one that would really freak out on me the most. He told me that he was happy that I had finally gotten to that point to recognize I had a problem and make some changes. He was also happy that I was man enough to come to him and to tell him what I had done. And he didn't want to accept the money to pay for the tires, but I told him, you know, it was part of what I needed to do. This is what I had to do for myself to move forward. And he did accept. And the third one, who I thought actually would be the easiest because it was my cousin and we did a lot of crazy and stupid stuff together. I thought he would understand, didn't. He freaked out on me. I was verbally attacked and at some points felt I was going to be physically attacked. And if I would have still had that old belief system about what forgiveness was, I'd still be carrying the guilt and the shame for that stupid act today. But with this new definition, with this new approach to forgiveness and self-forgiveness, I was actually able to let it go and realize he had every right to be angry. Whether he forgave me or not did not affect me letting go and moving forward. So what I'd like to ask you to do is to take a look at your life. Now, maybe the thing that you need to forgive yourself for has nothing to do with another person. Maybe it has to do with yourself, and I mean that in the sense of a commitment that you've broken to yourself, a goal that you set for yourself that you, that you didn't, not only didn't achieve, you did something totally counter to achieving it. As an example, a diet, and you went off the diet, or you were quitting smoking, and you started smoking again, and you just, I know for me, I tried to quit smoking many, many times, and when I would start smoking again, I would beat myself up. You have to forgive yourself for that because the choices that you made in the past are not going to determine who you become in the future unless you allow them to. So again, think of something that you feel shame or guilt for that you, you need to forgive yourself for. And first off, acknowledge it was simply a bad decision. Whatever the stimulus was, it was just a bad choice. Secondly, accept accountability for it. If there's something that you need to do to make amends for it, whether it's to somebody else or even to yourself, accept that responsibility. Third, let it go. Just let it go. You have the choice of whether you're going to carry that guilt and that shame forward from here, or you can say, you know what, enough. It was a bad choice. I'm standing up. I'm being accountable. Let's go forward. And that's the fourth step. Fourth step is to move forward. Become who you desire to be, who you deserve to be. The only way you can do that is through self-forgiveness. So I look forward to hearing the results that you get, the way you apply this. Maybe you can share some other approaches to self-forgiveness that I can use or I can share with others. Look forward to your feedback. I look forward to connecting soon. Take care. For a transcription of the video you just watched, more videos and related articles, visit yourdailylifecoach.com. To comment on this video, select Discussion Forums on any page of our website.